Every year, thousands of domiciliary care workers and service users become ill or are injured because of unsafe working practices or unsafe environments. This video sets out to make you more aware of the many potential hazards in the homes you may be working in and also explains your responsibilities for health and safety. Every care worker has a legal obligation for health and safety and may be found legally responsible for accidents or dangerous incidents that may occur. There are several laws governing health and safety in the workplace. The most relevant ones are Health and Safety at Work Act Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations COSH RIDOR Manual Handling Operations Regulations Fire Precautions Regulations It shall be the duty of every employee while at work to take reasonable care for health and safety of themselves and of other persons who may be affected by their acts or omissions at work. The Health and Safety at Work Act sets out the responsibilities which are held by both employers and employees. The Act requires employers to identify hazards and associated risks in the workplace and to take sensible measures, as far as is reasonably practicable, to tackle them. The Management of Health and Safety at Work regulations specify that the employee must report hazards to their employer. The general duties of the Health and Safety Act are supported by specific regulations that relate to manual handling, protective clothing, use of equipment, hazardous substances and the reporting of injuries and diseases. We will be looking at these areas in more detail in a moment. But remember, the legislation has been passed to protect you and those around you. You must have access to the policies and procedures that your particular agency or organisation has laid down with regard to health and safety. You must understand your rights, obligations and responsibilities then put them into practice. Apart from your legal responsibilities, knowing how to act and being alert and vigilant at all times can prevent injury, accidents, infections and even death. A risk assessment of every service user's premises must be undertaken to identify all the hazards and the level of risk involved so that action can be taken to reduce the risk or the level of risk. A copy of the risk assessment will be held at your manager's office and you must have access to it. Any information that relates directly to hazards within a service user's home must also be included in the care plan. Perhaps a service user has poor eyesight and regularly leaves hazards where they might be a risk to you or themselves. What exactly do we mean by hazard and risk? A hazard is anything that has the potential to cause harm to you, your service user, or anyone else in the locality. Things like electrical appliances, chemicals, medicines, contaminated food, anything that could cause injury or illness or disease. Risk is simply the chance of people being harmed by the hazard and the level at which they might be harmed. The risk is then rated in the risk assessment as high, medium or low. A risk assessment is a careful examination of a work activity or workplace, in this case your service user's home, to identify hazards or any significant risk that could result in injury. The risk assessment is usually carried out by a supervisor, but it's possible that you may be asked to do it yourself on your first visit to a new service user. If you aren't completely confident in your abilities to do this, ask your manager for more guidance. But here's how it's done. Look for the hazards. Decide who might be harmed and how. Weigh up the risk and decide whether existing precautions are enough. If not, decide what further precautions are needed to reduce risk. Record your findings. On an ongoing basis, you should look out for any significant changes in the service user or their living environment since their original assessment. Has a service user become confused or violent, for instance? How high is the risk that they will injure themselves or another person? Any changes should be recorded in the risk assessment and the care plan updated. 
Occasionally, you may be asked to visit a home where no formal risk assessment has been made, perhaps because of the need to provide cover at short notice. If so, your manager must inform you. It is then important to exercise particular caution and use your own judgement, informing your manager at once if you think that the situation is dangerous or unsafe. So what are the hazards you are likely to encounter and what can you do to reduce the level of risk? Slips, trips and falls. The commonest cause of injuries around the home. When you wash floors, make sure you mop up well. Don't leave pools of water that you or your service user may slip on. Always keep a lookout for sharp objects. If you are vacuuming, make sure that the flex is not trailing where you or someone else might trip on it. Watch out for carpets and rugs which are not fixed down securely and uneven or damaged steps. Keep stairs and passageways clear of obstacles and clean up any spillages straight away. Be cautious when using any equipment with which you are not familiar or could pose a risk. Never climb on furniture to change a light bulb, for instance. You should only do so if there is a stepladder and you have received training in its use. If this is the case, then you should check its condition and switch off the electricity supply at the mains first. To reduce the risk of falls, many agencies don't allow their staff to change bulbs or batteries and smoke alarms or use ladders of any kind. So be sure to consult your manager on their policy. If this is the case, ask the service user if there is a relative, friend or building manager who can help. If not, inform your manager so your service user isn't left in the dark. Remember, more haste, less speed. And as a general rule, don't put yourself under undue pressure. We all know how accidents can happen when we are hurrying. All staff whose jobs involve moving and handling should receive appropriate training. Moving and handling should be avoided so far as is reasonably practicable. When you are handling objects or people during the course of your employment, your work is covered by the Manual Handling Operations Regulations. When the original risk assessment was carried out, the service user's capability, body weight and living environment would have been noted. If a service user has restricted mobility through age or disability, appropriate techniques and equipment will have been decided on and noted in the care plan. A copy of the care plan is kept in the service user's home and at the manager's office. The plan specifies how the person will be handled and moved for each task in the normal course of your work. However, you are the one who sees the service user on a regular basis and will know if their care plan needs reviewing. You should not attempt to undertake any handling task involving a service user for which you have not been trained, beyond making the service user as comfortable as possible with the use of cushions or other aids. Lifting people is dangerous without using the appropriate equipment and may injure both the service user and yourself. Keep an eye on any equipment that the service user has at their home and make sure it is maintained regularly. Inform your manager if you think it needs replacing or servicing. Even in an emergency, you should not be tempted to lift a service user without appropriate equipment. Call for assistance or dial 999 and reassure them that help is on its way. If a service user needs to be lifted by a sling or hoist, you must receive training in the task before you can undertake it, for the safety of yourself, your colleagues and your service users. However, there will be other manual handling and lifting tasks that you may need to perform in your role as a domiciliary care worker. Carrying shopping, for instance. So wherever possible, place loads at waist level and split them up. Wear comfortable clothes that allow you to move freely and appropriate footwear. Should you have to lift from the ground, there is a right way and a wrong way to do it. Keep your feet apart. Bend your knees and keep your back upright. Use both hands to get a secure hold.
Keep your shoulders level, your back upright and slowly straighten your legs. To put the load down, take the weight on the legs by bending your knees. When lifting, always avoid twisting, jerking or reaching. Keep your head in line with your spine. And remember, if something is too heavy, don't attempt to lift it. Under the control of substances hazardous to health regulations, your employer is responsible for assessing the risks of any hazardous substances used in the workplace. In reality, most household products do not pose a significant risk to you or your service user, provided they are stored and used correctly. Look for the manufacturer's instructions and follow them. Keep products in their original containers and store them away from foodstuffs and out of the reach of children. You must also encourage your service user to do the same. Never mix products together. They could produce toxic fumes. Some bleaches and cleaning products, for instance, have this effect. If you're unsure of what's in the bottle or you can't read the label, don't use it. If your service user has poor eyesight or becomes confused easily, you should take particular care when storing substances and remember, our sense of smell diminishes with age. Any drugs that your service user no longer requires should be returned to the chemist or doctor's surgery. Infection control is a vital tool in operating a successful health and safety policy for care workers and your personal hygiene plays a big part in that. Wear clean clothes. Keep your nails short. Cover any open wounds with a coloured waterproof plaster and if necessary, tie your hair back. When you have been provided with protective clothing, you must wear it. It's a really effective method of preventing cross-infection. A tabard is suitable for general household cleaning in the kitchen and other living areas. But protective gloves and aprons must be worn for all personal care tasks that bring you into physical contact with your service user. They will help make sure that germs and bugs, harmful bacteria, do not spread to you or to another service user's home. Make sure you use them. You must dispose of all protective clothing after each visit to an individual service user or return it for sterilising. A few people may find that they develop an allergic reaction to the natural rubber in latex gloves. If you are one of them, you will still need to wear protective gloves. Talk to your manager who can advise you on an alternative product. Washing your hands thoroughly between tasks is a really effective method of preventing cross-infection that can lead to illness, including food poisoning, if you are preparing or serving food. But a quick rinse under the tap is not enough. You need at least 15 seconds in warm soapy water. Wash wrists and around fingernails. Rings should be removed before you undertake any care work. Dry carefully on a clean towel as damp hands are a great place for bacteria to start breeding all over again. Correct handling of waste products can also prevent the spread of infection. As a domiciliary care worker, you may well have to dispose of what is termed as clinical waste. Although it is unlikely that you will be handling the highest category of clinical waste, like that found in hospitals or care homes, you may be asked to dispose of or handle items such as dressings, nappies, incontinence pads or other similar soiled waste, bedding or containers. Wear protective clothing and don't overfill waste bags. Seal them by tying off the neck. If you are in any doubt about the safety to yourself or anyone else with regard to the type of waste you are coming into contact with, you should consult your manager. Contamination of food can be a serious hazard. A high level of personal hygiene and cleanliness in the kitchen must be maintained at all times. Food must be protected from the risk of cross-contamination and correct temperature control should be practiced. All food handlers should receive training in food hygiene. This will include information on how to store, 
prepare and serve food safely. Electricity represents three main hazards. Shocks and burns caused by contact with live parts, fires caused by electrical faults, source of ignition in the case of a gas leak. So what can you do to protect yourself and your service users? Make a habit of checking electrical appliances within your service users' homes. Look out for frayed cords on kettles, vacuum cleaners, irons, and don't use any items that are damaged. If a service user is regularly leaving appliances turned on, like irons, cookers or gas rings, you should inform your manager. Over 400,000 households a year experience a domestic fire. Some of your service users will be particularly vulnerable. Sadly, more than half of those killed in domestic fires are over 60. You must be trained in fire safety so that you understand how fires start and what you can do to prevent them. Fires are caused when fuel, oxygen and heat meet in the correct quantities and conditions. It's known as the fire triangle and there are plenty of opportunities for this to happen in the domestic environment. There are many fire hazards around the home. Smoking is one of the main causes of domestic fires. Try to discourage your service user from balancing ashtrays on the arm of a chair or putting it on the sofa or bed. When finished with, the contents should be doused with water before disposal as this will minimise the risk of cigarettes smouldering and reigniting in the waste bin. Other fire hazards include chip bands being left unattended, candles, frayed cords on electrical appliances, portable heaters, electric blankets, overloaded plugs and faulty wiring. When you begin working with a new service user, you should take time to familiarise yourself with the property in terms of fire precautions and escape routes. Ask your service user if they have made an escape plan in the event of fire. If they haven't, you should encourage them and anyone else living in the property to do so. Always keep escape routes clear of obstructions. If a fire breaks out while you are at a service user's home, your priority is a safe evacuation of the premises. Alert other people in the property, remain calm, and providing you can get to a telephone, dial 999. Ask for the fire service, stay calm, and speak clearly, giving your name, the address of the property, and information about who is with you. Be as accurate as you can. As with all areas of health and safety, you have a legal obligation to be vigilant of any changes that may affect the risk of fire in a service user's home. You will receive the appropriate training to help you do this. Make it part of your daily routine and understand it. It could save a life. In line with RIDOR, the reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrences regulations, your employer has a duty to monitor health and safety actively. They should investigate accidents or ill health and report certain work-related accidents, diseases and dangerous occurrences to the enforcing authorities. To help them meet their legal obligations, you should report all accidents, incidents and near misses to your manager. If you are handling food, you should also report sickness or diarrhoea. Personal injury accidents need to be recorded in an accident report book or form, usually held at your employer's office. Your employer will have an established policy on the reporting of accidents, disease or injury, and it's very important that you follow the procedures laid down by them. Your personal security is something for which you and your employer are both responsible under the Health and Safety at Work Act. You must be aware of the risks of violence to you and how to reduce the danger. Your agency will have procedures in place to deal with working at night 
and you should discuss these with your manager. They may have a procedure for you to phone in on completion of your visit or to work in pairs. Some agencies recommend that domiciliary carers do not take their handbags into service users' premises and that they keep an emergency £10 note and their keys in a pocket. Home security is an increasing problem for all sectors of society. Older people and the immobile are more vulnerable than most. You should discourage your service user from leaving their door on the latch for you to come in. It may be possible for them to have a key safe fitted outside the premises which can be opened by using a code known only to approved visitors. Whether it is day or night, if you are at all concerned by the locality you are being asked to visit or by the behaviour of a service user or someone else in their home, you should inform your manager at once. The care plan is not set in stone. Situations alter and develop and you are the one who will know about them. It is your responsibility to report any untoward incidents or changes for the safety of yourself, your colleagues and your service users. Understanding and observation of health and safety legislation is your legal responsibility. But it's also an important factor in doing your job well and protecting you and everybody else who is affected by your actions. Even though you are often on a tight schedule, you must take the proper time to perform tasks. Using the correct tools will benefit your health and safety and anyone else who might be affected by your actions. Keep records up to date and don't put yourself in situations for which you have not been trained or about which you are not confident of your knowledge. Above all, alert your manager to any changes or developments which could affect health and safety. You have just heard about when and how to report injury and disease, the importance of personal hygiene, washing your hands regularly, wearing protective clothing, how to protect your own general health and those around you by being vigilant to the presence of hazards. Working safely when carrying out general domiciliary duties and avoiding slips, trips and falls. When and how to move objects or people without risk of injury to them or yourself. Personal and home security. How to avoid putting yourself at risk when working at night or in difficult circumstances. Understanding fire hazards. Knowing what is meant by the fire triangle and how to respond in the case of an emergency. You are the person who sees the situation on a regular basis. You are the person who can make a real difference. <laughs>